From the moment of our birth, our senses are the most direct way of gathering information about the world around us. The touch of our hand tells us of our physical surroundings. And though we may take them for granted, they allow us to communicate in diverse and yet specific ways. In expressions of reverence, of compassion, reassurance, and trust, our hands can tell the world of our values and beliefs. As we mature, our hands become an expression of our skills and talents. A surgeon's hands do more than perform the techniques developed through training and experience. They are a tactile line of communication between the doctor and his patient when only topical or local anesthesia is used. In Jesus' name, amen. Except for situations where one-on-one -on -one mentoring occurs between surgeons in the operating room, hand and arm positions used by ophthalmologists during cataract and refractive surgery are not often visible when sharing surgical expertise via video or satellite broadcast of live surgery. We would like to present insights on hand techniques which have been effective in anterior segment surgery. Hand position plays a critical role in achieving instrument stability and maneuverability. But symbiotic with the clinical technique is the effect touch has on the patient. The significance of touch with regard to surgeon-patient interaction has not been adequately discussed or emphasized. Yet many patients, particularly nervous refractive patients, have commented following their surgery how significant the firm feeling of a hand or finger touch transferred to confidence and assurance during the procedure. Touch is reassuring. Touch transfers confidence. Touch projects calm. I want to just confirm the chart says Bill Houston. From the beginning of the procedure, when patient name, eye and chart information is confirmed, Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. And perhaps a short prayer is said. The touch of the surgeon's hand provides a psychological release of patient tension and unease, which could contribute to less than optimal surgical results. The patient's head has to be stable. Stability is the goal and the key to successful eye surgery. If surgery is conducted not on a fixed operating room table, but rather a reclining chair, a pedestal support can provide stability under the headrest once the patient is comfortably reclined. A patient's carotid pulse and breathing can translate in exaggerated head movement if the headrest is not firmly supported. The surgeon's forearm achieves support through use of a wrist rest. Different types of wrist rests have been devised, and Dr. Chan has developed an excellent one that many of us have used or modified. The stability of the wrists contributes significantly to the stability of the fingers and thereby the instruments within the eye. This stability is closer to the fingers than is the stability transferred from armrests on the surgeon's chair. A combination of armrests and wrist rests can also be beneficial, but can limit mobility of the arms and hands. The position of the wrist rest and armrest is critical in relation to height above the brow. Level of the wrist rest must be adjusted according to the tilt of the head and how deep set the eye is in the orbit. Some patients cannot extend the neck to achieve a level orbit, therefore surgery must occur in a chin down position. This also affects the location of the incision, whether superior or temporal. With armrest and wrist rest optimized, Further stability can be achieved using the fourth and fifth fingers on the cheek or patient's brow. These fingers can be left extended to appropriately stabilize the hand. In very delicate situations, if the surgeon's finger stability is suboptimal because of inexperience or nervous tension exists due to complications or fatigue, the second hand can help to stabilize the hand holding the surgical instrument. Many surgical procedures in ophthalmology require two instruments in the eye for maximum efficiency and effectiveness, so that if two hands are required on one instrument, the surgeon is limited in using these techniques. Stability can be improved when necessary by placing two hands on one instrument, as when using a cannula to remove 12 o'clock cortex. Because the entrance wound is a fulcrum to instrument movement, Large excursions of the hands and arms are sometimes required to achieve proper movement and position of the cannula tip or instrument within the eye. Good arm position is required in order to optimize effective movement for this procedure. In laser refractive surgery, stability of the patient's head and eye are extremely critical. 
Many patients are relaxed enough to have stable head positions and can maintain a steady fixation of the eye. Because of nervousness, or perhaps head movement due to a strong carotid pulse or deep breathing, but particularly with unstable fixation of the eye, some patients must be assisted with head and eye stability to obtain a central and stable eye for laser ablation. Tracking devices can follow head and eye movement. However, eye movements are rotational, making it impossible for tracking devices to follow the surface of the cornea. They typically image the pupil or the limbus, which are on a different plane than the central cornea being ablated. This parallax situation makes the eye appear on the monitor as being fixed, with the pupil not moving on the monitor screen, but the surface of the eye is not imaged and therefore not displayed on the screen as maintaining perfect stability. For this reason, and for procedures performed on instruments without precise active tracking capabilities, stabilizing the eye as well as the head with two hands during laser ablation surgery not only achieves the stability and centration required, but also through the firm touch of the surgeon's hand, the patient is reassured that uncontrolled movements are being managed. Again, this touch bears a psychological affirmation and communicates to the patient, which in turn makes the experience more positive. For direct eye stabilization, we use a gimbal-modified fine Thornton ring with an offset opening and with projections on both sides so that it can be flipped for either eye for comfortable positioning in relation to the superior hinged flap. Gross centering movements are achieved by an XYZ foot control and fine movements are then controlled with the hands stabilizing the head. The final Z position, or focus, is achieved with slight pressure of the gimbal Thornton ring on the eye to stabilize the saccades. A finger on the cheek prevents a chin down drift and together with fingers of the other hand on the patient's forehead, stability and centration of the head is maintained. Lateral head movements are usually well controlled by the patient, but these are also assisted with open fingers of one hand on the patient's forehead. The slight pressure on the eye with the ring can potentially cause eye rotation, particularly if the ring is applied at an angle. This technique is a learned skill so that the fingers holding the ring can exert that slight pressure without rotation. This is confirmed on each case by pressing, then lifting, and again pressing, then lifting, to make sure the eye does not rotate with that pressure applied. During the ablation, the surgeon must be aware of one's own respiration as not to affect the position of the hands, particularly if the arms are stabilized against the chest. In summary, the stability of the surgeon's hands requires arm rests and or wrist rests as well as finger stabilization on the patient's forehead and cheek with the portion of the hand not used to hold the surgical instrument for interocular surgery. The surgeon's hands must stabilize the patient's head and the patient's eye during laser corneal refractive corrections. This firm touch produces a message of calm, non-verbal reassurance to the patient. Stability of the head leads to stability in the fingers and instruments, which influences through touch and reassures the patient.